down two and a half. Breaking up some dust. Thirty feet two and a half down. Straight shadow. Four forward. Four forward. Drift into the right a little. Six down a half. Contact light. Engine stop. APA at a descent. Boat control both auto descent engine command override off. Engine arm off. Four thirteen is in. Twist it. The eagle has landed. Hey guys, Epicenter Brian here. Uh, hope that intro got you fired up because today we're going to talk about the Eagle, the new oilless maintenance free pump for Harvest Right freeze dryers. First off, we ought to talk about the price. Um, there are really two prices. One for if you're buying um, a brand new freeze dryer and you select the option to get the oilless pump. And then the other price is for existing customers who want to upgrade and uh, replace their pump with this unit. Now if you're looking to buy a brand new Harvest Right freeze dryer, you can now select whether you want the least expensive path and the price of the freeze dryer includes a $300 pump that's built into the price of the freeze dryer. Um, all freeze dryers will come with this new 7.2 CFM pump, um, which is a very, very good pump. I'm very happy with that pump. Um, it does use oil, so it means that there's some maintenance if you go that path. Now the maintenance includes draining the oil, filtering it, and refilling the pump after each use. And then every 20 batches, you're supposed to take the front of the pump off, uh, clean the insides out, and then put the front back on. Um, so, you know, that is something that we've all done. It's something that you can get used to, at, you know, after the first time you do it, it's second nature. It does take a little bit of time, but it's the least expensive way to get into freeze drying. Now there's another path, and that is to go with a maintenance free pump. And if you're buying your freeze dryer, um, this is going to cost $1,295 to do the upgrade to this pump. If you select the upgrade, you don't get the oil-based pump. Um, and you don't get the oil filter because you don't need that. And so basically that's a, a $300 value and they apply that to the cost of this upgrade. So it makes your cost $1,295 when you're buying this at the same time. Now, um, these are in a little bit short supply right now and so um, we're not able to offer these separately to current uh, Harvest Right owners. Uh, for a couple more weeks until January 2018 um, and then they're going to get a big shipment. For existing Harvest Right owners the cost of the pump outright is going to be $1,595. If you're interested we've got a little list that we're starting. Um, it's sort of a waiting list. Just give us a call and uh, or send us an email. Check out our website and we can put you on the waiting list. Another thing to note for existing Harvest Right customers is this uses the new style hose connector okay and so you need to take a look at your hose and make sure that you have the correct hose now the new hose looks like this it's got a knurled connector um, and in the center is an o-ring seal if you don't have this kind and you have the one that kind of looks like a garden hose fitting um, you're going to need to do an upgrade um, and you'll need to get the new hose and a connector to go onto the freeze dryer for this hose to fit. And those are going to be available in January as well. And uh, we'll have all that pricing info as soon as they have that upgrade kit available. Another thing I wanted to make clear is we are an authorized Harvest Right dealer. And uh, the prices on our website include the shipping cost um, in the price of the freeze dryer. Uh, if you buy it on the Harvest Right site, uh, the prices look lower, um, but they add the shipping when you're actually in the shopping cart uh, checkout process. So if you actually compare the numbers, we're the same price or we're a little bit cheaper. And occasionally there's some kind of a flash sale. Um, if that happens and you notice a less expensive price over on the Harvest Right site, uh, you can give us a call and we're authorized to offer that same price. So anyway, um, we're going to go into some details about this. We're going to run some tests on it. We're going to make some noise measurements so you can hear how quiet this is. We're also going to run a real batch of food, uh, five pounds of green beans, 
and we're going to time how long it takes for this pump to uh, complete the process. We're also going to do the same with the 7.2 CFM pump that comes standard with new freeze dryers and we'll compare those times and we're also going to look at the older JB pump uh, which was used prior to the 20th of November this year um, and we'll compare with, with uh, that pump as well so that you get an idea is this really faster? And yes it is. Is it quieter? Yes, it is. Um, but anyway, there's going to be about 20 minutes worth of video, so you know, feel free to skip around or kick back and uh, see it all happen. Over here you see a big box on the front. This has the power connector, a standard 3-pin connector, uh, like on a computer or a monitor. The on-off switch is here. It's got a r rubber protector over that. Inside the box are the start and the run capacitors um, and then of course the wiring to get that into the motor. Now the motor is the black section up here on top and the bottom section is the scroll pump. And right in here is where all the money is. That's the expense right here. So the motor itself has a fan on the top. It's got a cowling here that directs the airflow over all of these heat sinks and uh, does a great job cooling the motor. Now down in here you'll see what looks like a disc. That disc is actually a fan and you'll see that there's airflow through these openings here and all along the top part of this gray piece those are openings for air to flow in and out so that cools the top part of the pump there's another one down here on the bottom so there's a second fan down there and more cooling fins one thing to note um, is that you want to make sure not to obstruct this opening down here in the bottom because that's the inlet for the um, cooling for the bottom part of the scroll pump okay now over here you see a kind of a strange looking thing um, that is where the air comes out. Of course the air is going to be warm. That's also where the water, any kind of water that's coming through the pump comes out of the same outlet. As well as any kind of food particles come out of there with the water. Now up here you'll see the standard uh, 45 degree connector. This is uh, this mates up with all of the new Harvest Right vacuum lines. And so if you've bought a Harvest Right uh, any time in the last eight months or so, it's got this kind of a connector on the Harvest Right and also on uh, the oil type pump. Okay, now there's another port here which is not used and this knurled cap has a gasket in there so you just want to make sure that's tight and then just ignore it because you don't need it. All right, that's what it looks like. And now we're going to hook it up and do some testing. Okay, we're all set up to try out the new oilless pump. And uh, we've got the same setup, uh, same distance. Now this pump, the loudest part is going to be the exhaust port right here. And then you'll hear motor noise and everything as well. So this is in line, and we have a we have a um, dB meter that's going to be measuring that, and we also have a spectrum analyzer where we can look at the noise itself. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, reset, and then I'm going to go silent, and we're going to run the test just like we did with the other pumps. So here goes.
letting the vacuum equalize. And then what I wanted to do was go ahead and run the pump um, without closing that valve, just out of curiosity. Um, this pump has no oil, so there's no way that it can possibly spit oil. But I'm just kind of curious if it sounds exactly the same um, with a big air leak. So let's take a look at that. And we'll say, nope, and start, and go, and all right. Okay, well, I don't know what that shows us uh, because I wasn't expecting it to do anything unusual, but thought that would be kind of fun. We're going to run some tests on all three pumps um, over the next couple of days, and we're going to use one standard item, the same amount, when in the freeze dryer for each of the different pumps. Uh, what I chose is a five pound bag of green beans. This is from Flavor Pack, and Flavor Pack is right up the road in uh, Salem. And so, anyway, we're going to go ahead and just spread five pounds over four trays and uh, get a pump hooked up and start it up, and we'll, we'll see how long it takes to finish a batch. So, let's look at the settings. I'm going to put this on customize just so you see the times. Okay, we're going to do the standard nine hour freeze, seven hour dry, and I'm going to go ahead and start this up. Okay, and so here we go. I'm going to close that off and uh, get the door shut. The valve is already closed. Can't do this one handed. Shoot. Okay. There we go. Okay, and there is the time. All right, I've got a couple of interesting things to show you. Um, first, the exhaust port here. I have a uh, bowl that I've been collecting the water just to show you that this is indeed where the water comes out. And if you can see that, that's how much water has been collected here. And that would normally go in your oil. Now there's one other interesting thing. Um, right in here I found a little clump of something and pulled it out and voila! This would have gone in the oil too. Now I looked at this under um, a magnifier and it appears that these are fibers from the first batch of green beans that I did. So uh, anyway, yes indeed. Uh, any food deposits do come out of the same port. We're going to look at that under a microscope and that's what it looks like right there. So that looks like uh, green bean particles that have clumped together and exited out of the pump. So there you have it. Kind of cool. That, if you had an oil type pump, would have gone into your oil this batch just finished and let's look at the time okay 23 hours 26 minutes all right here we go oh yeah beautiful okay great yeah definitely done Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Again, this is five pounds of green beans with the 7.2 CFM Harvest Right branded pump. And so let's go ahead and get this started. And just to show you, we're going to be doing a seven, a nine hour freeze and a seven hour uh, dry time. So here we go. Okay. 
So that's it. And uh, let's see, what is the time right now? It is, well, this is the beginning time on the 30th. So here we go. Okay, this batch is almost done, and uh, let's take a look at how much time it took. Okay, as you can see, this took almost uh, two hours more time than the oilless pump, uh, and it's finishing up right now. So I think that other one was about 23 hours 20 minutes, uh, but we'll check the we'll check the video and post all the results. And I'm going to go ahead and defrost today because I'm going to start up another batch. Now this third batch is going to be with the original JB pump. So we'll have times for all three pumps. No test would be complete without running a batch with an original JB pump. So I've got one set up here and we're going to do an identical batch. Uh, again, green beans, five pounds. And we're going to use standard settings here. Okay. And here we go. Okay, we're just about done with testing uh, with the JB pump. And it looks like it's about comparable to the Harvest Right branded pump. We're looking at uh, 23 hours, 5 minutes, and we'll have to take a look at the, uh, the film from the, the last batch with the Harvest Right 7.2 CFM pump to know for sure, but I think this is pretty close. All right, so it's done, and that's about it. So I'll let the air in. We'll get this unloaded and packed up. And then we're going out to dinner tonight. We're going to Sushi Domo. And I'm going to get some blue crab, some soft shell blue crab. Yum! I mentioned that when I see my harvest right go negative numbers, which doesn't make sense, um, I always know everything is done. And you saw we weren't uh, negative on those numbers. So anyway, in packing the green beans and, you know, testing as I went along, I discovered there are some that were still cold inside. So, unfortunately, um, I'm heading out for, for Din Din, and so I'm going to just go ahead and throw this in the freezer and deal with it tomorrow. It's the next day, and uh, this is, this is going to be done. I just wanted to show you that my machine always shows negative millitors um, when the items are done. So I know this is done. I don't have an exact time for how long the JB pump would have taken uh, because time had to be added kind of arbitrarily anyway. Uh, so anyway, that's interesting to know and uh, that's it. I put together a chart so we can go over the test results for all three pumps. Let's take a look. The loudest pump when it first started up is the old JB pump, and the quietest pump by the time they all attained 500 millitors of vacuum, uh, the quietest one is the Eagle. Now, about the batch times, two of the pumps finished the batches, and it turns out the JB, it looks like it was done earlier, but it wasn't actually done. Um, so of the two pumps that actually finished without having to add time, the fastest is the Eagle, which came in at 23 hours, 26 minutes. Um, the Harvest Right standard oil pump, the 7.2 CFM, took almost two hours longer, uh, but it did complete the batch. Now the JB, uh, like you saw in the video, the beans were not actually done, and so time had to be added. Since I already started the defrost cycle, I had to stop that, put the machine back into freeze for multiple hours, and then uh, let it go ahead and do additional dry time. So basically I started up a new batch in custom mode. When I came in the next day, it was totally done. I mentioned that my machine always shows negative Millitor numbers when the food is completely done. 
Um, I've learned that from experience over the last year owning that machine because there are times when I add a lot of extra uh, final dry time just because I don't want the batch to end at 2 o'clock in the morning. I want it to end at 9 when I get to work. And so anyway, um, I have seen big negative numbers before and every time I've checked the food, it was totally done. So um, the Eagle, unfortunately, you didn't get to see that number because I didn't have the camera running when the batch ended. Uh, so I had to go into the logs for the freeze dryer on the flash drive and it uh, actually attained a negative 109 millitor reading. Now on the standard 7.2 CFM oil-based pump, it attained a negative 45 reading. And when I came in the next day, the JB actually attained a negative 44 reading. And that batch was totally done as well. Anyway, that's a quirk with my machine, but it's just an indicator um, that when, when the JB did actually finish the batch, it was nearly the same reading as the uh, Harvest Right standard pump which took 25 hours and 20 minutes and the JB definitely took longer. I don't know how much time it took. Next up we're going to take a look at the frequency analysis and some people might not be interested in this so I'll, I'll keep this kind of short. The two charts shown represent all the noise from 20 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz and this is with each pump attaining a 500 millitor vacuum. What you can see is the Eagle has less high frequency noise and the low frequency noise is also attenuated. Everything in this region from 800 Hertz to 10,000 Hertz is what's being measured with the A weighted scale on the dB meter. And you can also see that the Eagle's level in that region is also lower. Overall, the Eagle is a significantly quieter pump compared to the oil version. And you can certainly hear that in the video uh, when you hear the two pumps running. You can definitely hear a difference. And all that video was shot with the same camera. For the Epicenter.com and my little buddy, the Eagle, I'm Epicenter Brian, signing out.